Welcome back to the channel. It wasn't too long ago that we actually added auto steer to this Alice Chalmers 8030. And the auto steer that we use is actually called Easy Steer. It's made by Trimble. A little electric motor. You'll see all that here in a minute if you haven't seen this, that video already. But today's video is actually because we're going to upgrade it. So the Easy Steer 500 is the receiver or the display unit that we have in there currently. We are going to upgrade to the CFX 750. Now, the reason for this upgrade really isn't because it's necessary. We actually like the way that one works and wasn't planning to do anything. Um, however, I guess after I made this video, I don't know if that kind of drove the prices up on it or what, but it was actually cheaper to buy this CFX 750 than it was to buy an Easy Steer 500. So the CFX 750 is an upgraded unit. But the key on this one is that I paid $1,400 for this unit. Now, it did not come with anything other than just the unit, no power cable or anything. I'm going to show you those here in a second as well. But I bought this for $1,430 and uh, pretty happy with that price ultimately, especially since this has got way more capability and it's a touchscreen, so I'm not restricted to the buttons and stuff. Now, there are buttons on the back to use to change some stuff and turn it on and off. But overall, everything is going to be controlled by touchscreen. So why are we going to upgrade it? Well, the honest and easiest answer is we want to add GPS guidance. So we're not going to do the auto steer on the other tractor, on our Alice Chalmers 7000. You're going to see that in another video. But we're basically taking this Easy Guide 500 head unit out, and we're going to replace it with the CFX 750. Now, we didn't have to upgrade our GPS globe, but we did. And the reason being is because, again, it was only like $30 difference to buy the AG25 versus the AG15. Now, the AG15 is the globe that's actually on this tractor and that we've been using for the last year. It works great. Every time we're in line and doing something, we typically stay right around that anywhere from zero to about three inches on our line. Now, I'm very happy with that because we set everything to a six inch overlap. So even then, we still have plenty. We're not missing anything. Makes it really easy and really nice with minimal um, overlap, way better than we could do freehand. Now, as mentioned, because we are going to take the AG15 globe and also the Easy Guide 500 monitor out of here and take it to the Alice Chalmers 7000, I need to replace a few things, one of which is the power cable, which the power cables are not interchangeable on these units anyhow. So the power cable that I had to buy since it didn't come with one is the Trimble 67258. So you will need that. And this is just a basic power cable. So if you have other things to power off of it, there's another piece that you can buy. I don't know it, but if you just search the CFX uh, 750 wiring diagram, you can find the diagram really easily and it'll show you all the different part numbers you need as far as cables go. The other part number that we needed because we are going to continue using our easy steer motor with this unit is the 75742. Now this cable allows us to plug into the monitor and then also be able to plug into our easy steer motor to again be able to control it with this monitor. Lastly, I did have to buy a ram mount because I'm going to need that ram mount because it's specific to that head unit. I'm going to need that for the Alice Chalmers 7000, whereas this is going to work just fine for the um, CFX 750 that we're putting in this 8030. All right, before we get started with the actual CFX 750, now we swapped out our globes. Now, you don't have to by any means. It will work with the AG15. The reason we swapped ours out is because this CFX 750 is RTK unlocked. We don't need RTK, and if it was a subscription or like I had to buy a base station to use it, or anything of that nature, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay it because it's just not valuable for me. Being able to stay within zero to three inches is perfectly fine for what we're doing. Mainly doing hay, um, yeah, here and there we're doing some plowing or disking to, you know, maybe set up a new hay field or rolling or um, spread manure, stuff like that, right? There's nothing that we're doing that we have to be sub inch accuracy. However, Either way, I was going to have to buy an antenna, and the AG15s were literally about $30 less than an AG25 when I was trying to buy these. Um, so I just went ahead and went with a 25 because then it will allow me to use RTK on this tractor. So this is our Easy Guide 500 right here, and then right here where my hand is at, this is our Easy Steer motor. 
Now, right now I have it kicked out away from the steering wheel. Now this Easy Guide 500 is really easy to take off, so I'm just gonna disconnect the ram mount real quick. And there is a lot of wires to it. I'm not gonna lie about that. It has a little more wiring than what I kind of expected. However, the wire that it has isn't a, uh, you know, it's nothing that's crazy. It's not difficult to deal with or anything like that. All right, so we got everything hooked up. All of our wires are just loosely ran right now. It comes down here. Now, I don't have a power bus bar. I have something similar that we've kind of made that works for us. It allows us to essentially plug in several USB ports and it's kind of tucked away in a bad spot as far as camera goes. However, that's how we power everything. What we want to do now is we're going to run through this setup real quick. It seems like this screen is probably a little too bright for you guys. Let's turn the brightness down a little bit. Oh, there we go. Now you can see. All right. Uh, we're doing easy steer and manual steer. We are doing... All right, now we don't have any GPS data because we are inside of a building, obviously. However, everything seems to be working. All right, so we're going to leave this alone for now. We're going to have to pull out. If you can't tell in front of us, pulling out of the shop tonight is not going to happen. We uh, we have some bad storms that are supposed to be coming through, so we have vehicles in here, and then we got vehicles in the barn. It's just kind of, everything's kind of crowded. All right, <clears throat> we're about to pull this thing out. We'll figure out if it's going to pick up any sort of tracking, and then we'll also give it a good test. Make sure it actually works. Yeah, I forgot. One thing that I like about this, um, opposed to the Easy Guide 500, I like the simple fact that this doesn't turn on automatically with the key. I have to press the power button and then it'll come on. I do like that. That is actually pretty convenient in my opinion because there's a lot of times I turn this tractor on and I'm moving something. I don't. I don't need this at all. So I decided to start driving around in the yard and. That made a big difference. Plus, I also set this from auto select on the uh, satellites to satellite 135. And now I've, I've got up to four bars over here. I imagine it's waiting on maybe another satellite or two, and then it'll go to, because it's on 10 satellites, it started at seven. Let's say once it gets all those figured out, then it'll start giving me the auto steer options. I don't know how well you'll be able to hear it, but right now it's asking me to go through some calibrations for the easy steer. All right, so now it's doing the same thing, but we're going to turn left. It's making sure it has the correct angle, so every time the steering wheel turns, how many degrees is that turning me? All right, so now we've got everything kind of organized out, and I know I cut that part short of how everything gets set up, but it walks you through all of it. It's really simple. Just make sure you have an open field where you're not going to run into things. So, got everything set up, made my boundaries for this field and I'm rolling right now nine foot swaths and it's doing a great job I'm still staying in that zero to two inch mark of being on target now again we don't have RTK this is RTK unlocked but I'm in South Central Missouri there is no row cropping that really happens here just hay crops and uh, so there's really no RTK base towers around for us to use with all that being said though the I have no problem with the the system the cfx 750 works great um, it's slightly different than the easy guide 500 um, as far as like how things are engaged and stuff like that but overall a lot of the stuff is the same like mapping so like i mark rocks and random things that i want to be aware of in the field just because like I said we're using mower conditioners and um, you know they're kind of sensitive to rocks going through them. zoom in a little bit for you so you can see and i'll turn the brightness up as well Should be able to see decently well i think um, i would hold the camera up but you wouldn't be able to see nothing because i wouldn't be able to hold it still well enough uh, works pretty well though i have no complaints over it if it's something you're interested in check it out like i said it works well with the easy steer motor and for those of you that aren't sure this is the easy steer motor right here basically it's this motor is spinning and that's what's turning your steering wheel but you can still steer it freehand and you'll see that here in a second when i turn around this in row because i don't kick it away when i turn around Just like that, we're turning around. Uh, I'm a little off, but it'll get us back. Not worried about that. So, 
this and this field's kind of rough, as you can see, like with us bouncing around and stuff. Um, that's why we're rolling it. It was a hay field we created last year, and uh, we got it as smooth as we could, but we just didn't have any rain and made it to where you couldn't really roll anything because it didn't really do much at that point. So now we've got all of our all of our rain and everything coming in here, and it's actually probably in some in several areas of this, it's a little too wet to be playing around in here, but I need to get it done. It's right now in the forecast there's several days of rain that are going to happen so it is what it is we're just gonna make the mess make the best of it and uh, take the mess that we make with it and you can see that we cleaned up our install too i didn't really show that basically i tucked my wires um, up in here you can tuck them in between the headliner and the the frame of course if you have a bail monitor and stuff in here too you can tuck it up there everything else is all tidied up back here as well and far far more nice looking than it was during the video but hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions put them in the comments down below have a blessed week we'll see you next time